Hey, and welcome to the channel. We're back with Project Pepper. If this is your first time visiting Yogi's Garage, welcome. We are working on a 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. I've owned this car since April of 2021, and since then I've repaired numerous issues with the interior, the exterior, suspension, and now the engine. So for the last year, I've been rebuilding this engine, and here we are, the last steps to get the engine put back together so we can get it back into the engine bay and start this car for 2023. So let's wrap this up with this short video and we'll see you on the other side. All right, what you're looking at here is uh, the power steering pump and it's actually in two pieces here because I took it apart. There's two little pins that are driven through here and the actual pump to hold it all together. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is because this thing was leaking like crazy, but I couldn't figure out where it was leaking from when I first got the car. So uh, now that obviously the engine's apart, I'm, I'm able to figure it out because I don't want to put this unit back in if I haven't definitively identified the leak. Well, I think I did. And it, it, it was right here. This is the second, this is the primary reservoir of the power steering system. And then the other one that bolts on or connects on with a pressure fit here is the secondary tank. So this connects here and this collar and the O-ring, the collar is fine, but it's the O-ring that was really, really fat or really, really flat, the opposite of fat. And uh, I th there was a, a great deal of buildup under here. So I think anything coming in from here uh, and I don't know, it just, I think it leaked from here and it, it could have also possibly leaked from here. Now I'm, now I'm doubting myself, but I'm pretty sure it came from here. Anyway, I replaced the O-ring uh, and then I'm gonna put the collar back in and it goes in like that. And then that'll fit together and I ram those pins back in and this pump is ready to go inside the engine. Well, not inside, on top. All right, uh, I had to pause for a second because I needed to do a shout out to Finn from A Man in a Garage again. Special thanks for his videos uh, because it let me know that there's not one or two harnesses, but three. So I found it. And I'm going to attach it and I'll get this conduit here. And it just, just reaffirms that the, my routing is correct. Because you can see I followed my videos for this. It's an S, basically. The wires go around here and they route through this clip and around the AOS to the other side. So making progress. And I got the uh, grounding cable in, in place. I need to figure out, I need to make sure that I have that connected right. And I got to connect that as well. All right, making more progress here. I've got the alternator in, just a couple of bolts to line this thing up. And I've got the power steering pump going in next. I also got the starter all, all patched in here, grounded, ready to go. I'm still wrestling with the vacuum. I'm gonna take care of that just as soon as I can uh, break away from rewrapping a lot of these cables. You'll see that these cables here have been rewrapped. This one here has been rewrapped. Um, quite a few of them have simply because the wrapping is just unraveling and it's just soaked in oil or power steering fluid, whatever it is. So anyway, I am going to continue. going to get the power steering pump in, clamp these down, and move on. Right, this seems to be often overlooked, but this is the power steering line. And you can see that there is an O-ring right there, and it is flat as a pancake. So don't forget that. That could be another potential uh, leak right there as well. And this fitting also looks terrible as well. Oof. Okay, PS pump is installed, PS. Power steering pump is installed. I may have a bad pump. This thing does not spin freely unless it moves. It may just be dry. I'm hoping that it's just dry. I'm gonna leave it be until we used to get power steering fluid in there. And then I'll freak out. All right, uh, what else we got? Okay, so I got this in. It's not bolted in just yet because I'm calling it a night, but I've got the power steering tubing all routed. 
I'm good to go. Everything's clipped in. I've got a couple of other connectors here that uh, don't have a place just yet. Check it out, man. It's getting close. I gotta put a pulley there and an idler pulley there. Okay, back at it. Uh, power steering pump is installed, pulleys installed, idler pulleys installed, uh, alternator is installed. By the way, I fixed the power steering hang up by putting, I just poured a little bit of power steering fluid in there and now it's running smooth. So that's good because that son of a gun is expensive. All right, uh, next thing, put that right there so I don't drop anything in there. As I forgot to install the muffler mount bra brackets, but uh, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't that big of a deal, sort of, kind of. Because I just loosened up the AOS tube here and kind of got around it, same thing. Yogi Mama helped me with her teeny tiny hands. So that certainly helped quite a bit. And we've got sensors here that are going to go into the intake manifold. But everything else is ready to be cinched up and wrapped up. The only thing I have left to do now is the vacuum. Yeah, so I'm going to work on the ignition coils next. I've already started clicking in the connectors to everything. And I'm going to be using um, dielectric tune-up grease on the ignition coils just to keep them from corroding and to ensure proper uh, connectivity. So this is important. I'm also using deoxit. So a combination of those two will certainly get these connectors ready to go. Right. I'm just going to put a little bit in there, and then once it goes in, it'll make contact with the spark plug, and we're good. So now, let's get this in. in there. Neat. So these ignition coils go straight up. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to button up the side here. I'm going to put the heat shields on, and I just wanted to give you guys one last look at how awesome this looks. And if you've been following along, which a lot of you have, you know that this engine was in really bad shape, just visually. In fact, I believe it was this particular cylinder head that had muddy silt piled up on top of the cylinder head. Uh, I'll put a picture if I have one right there and you can take a look for yourself. And you know, overall, despite all of the issues that were self-inflicted, uh, as well as unavoidable, so far, so good. Let's keep it going. Heat shields. And then from there, I've already wrapped up the vacuum system. I'll show you what the routing looks like. And then we're going to get the intake manifolds. And then we're done. All right, here we are. The last phase of the engine project, the intake. This is what we got. I've already got these collared and ready to go loosely. I may have to loosen them up a little bit. Oh, this one may have to be tightened up a little bit so I don't lose it. We've got new gaskets here uh, and new bolts all the way around and an ugly bracket. And this probably attaches to some kind of harness that goes in the front here. And of course the changeover valve that controls the flapper on uh, the opposite side here, and which is this right here. This controls this little diaphragm. And then uh, this right here uh, goes into here and here. So I'm gonna get to do the final unplugging. You know, you don't want anything falling into your engine. Well. That risk is just about over. Bye, valves. See you next time. You know, I must be suffering some PTSD because I completely forgot that this dumb bolt here can't go in with the AOS in place. So I'm going to have to loosen the AOS and just get me enough room if I can get to that bolt right there. I'm not even sure how the heck I'm going to do that. And... Um, Try to get that out of the way. Oh, let's see what I can do. All right, I've taken that bolt out and I've loosened that and I think I've got enough room here to push that guy in. There we go. Look at that. Thank goodness. All right, I'll tighten it all back up. Crisis averted. 
I'm telling you, ever since that ladybug showed up, I've had nothing but good luck. And if you guys know the significance of a ladybug, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you think that is. Whew. I tell you, the struggle is real on this side. Getting this all figured out, how it goes. I think that's the way it's supposed to go. In fact, I'm pretty certain that these are all the ones that are wrapped up in that sleeve right here that I'm looking for. It looks like I'm going to have to go after market on that. Porsche dealership didn't know what I was even talking about. Um, yeah, so we are ready to go on the second side, and then we'll get everything snaked in. This is bolted in, but as you can see, it's loose. Something tells me I'm going to have to do some finagling to get this thing all the way in. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you that I also had to take this off to get this where it needed to be. So now that it's where it needs to be, I can put it all back on. Okay, no big deal on this side. I should have started with this side so that I would have built up the courage to work on that side. But hey, now I'm better for it. And yes, I know that this hose is um, cracked. When I do a vacuum test, I'm gonna have to see if that hose is not leaking because this little thing right here, I think I've mentioned it, it's stupid. It's like $70. So yeah, I've got this ready. Got the temperature probe here. Uh, I don't... I think I gotta stick it in from underneath. Hello. And uh, I gotta remember how to do that. Before I button this up, I said I'd show you the vacuum system and how it's run. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, from, I'm gonna start down here. So from here, it's coming from the canister and it's splitting off from the changeover valve. And then this one here is going all the way across. And it's weird, it's like, this one comes from the changeover valve in the front, which then is controlling uh, this check valve that goes into the neck here, which I should go ahead and do now since I'm looking right at it. <laughs> there, just like that. Yeah, that's all there is to it, but it took a little bit of figuring it out because some of these connectors were not connected when I took the engine apart. Um, so yeah, and luckily I only had to replace just a couple of, um, or one single length of vacuum tubing with the white stuff. So we're good to go. Now I'm gonna put that on and tighten it all up and we'll take a final look. Guys, we're done. I finished. I have nothing left to do on the engine itself except put the exhaust on, which is for a later time. The next thing is to get this thing in the engine bay. So I'm super excited for what's next. Thank you guys for joining me along the way. If this is your first time visiting Yogi's Garage, get caught up on this playlist and you'll see the experience that Yogi Mama and I went through buying this car and taking the engine out and completely rebuilding it. And I'm really happy with the results so far, but only the true test will tell. And that will be the engine start, which will be in a couple more weeks. So what's next? Well, I gotta do a vacuum test, so I'm gonna do a smoke test on the intake manifold to make sure there are no vacuum leaks. I have some suspicions on this $70 cheap hose as being a potential culprit and as well as the, some of the more brittle vacuum lines. So we've still got some work to do, but the hard part is done compared to what we're, where I've been. So with that said, thank you guys for joining us. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead Don't step to me newbie, I could truly be moody I could have played the bridge in the movies I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time, that is not